In redoing the bathroom and the cabinets, we also wanted to redo the medicine cabinet. And the medicine cabinet that was there looks like it was bigger at one point, and then someone must have taken something out, maybe the doors that were on it, and put in two smaller metal cabinets with some terrible filler wood around the, the pieces to kind of take up the difference. Now in our house, we don't have any trim per se. The, the doors and the cupboards all just are openings in the wall with a door without any frame. So I wanted to do this kind of detail with the new medicine cabinet. And as we were raising the height of the counter in the bathroom, I needed to raise the height of the bottom of the medicine cabinet so the doors wouldn't hit the sink faucets. So I needed to pull out the old frame and all of the old medicine cabinet. What I wanted to have in the end was just an opening in the wall with the doors to the medicine cabinet flush with the surface of the wall. So I put up some metal corner bead and then plastered the edge of the opening. And this gave me a nice sharp frame for the medicine cabinet. Then it was a matter of making two boxes for the two sides of the medicine cabinet. And this was fairly straightforward. It was just four sides and a back. I wanted to do some edge banding on the front of that box. So I cut some strips from some scrap pieces of birch that I had to the width of the size of the box, which is about half an inch. Once I had all the pieces cut out, I could glue that edge onto the pieces of plywood for the box. I just put glue down and I used my pin nailer to hold the edge on as the glue dry. Then I cut the pieces to their final length and their final width. Before I put the boxes together, I wanted to drill the holes for the adjustable shelf brackets. So I measured where those would go and I set up the fence on the drill press and it let me drill a line of holes really quickly into the long sides of the boxes. And I needed to cut some pieces for the back. So I had some quarter inch birch plywood that would work for that. Now that all the pieces are ready, I can put the boxes together. I didn't bother with glue on these because it's a pre-finished plywood, so I didn't think it was really gonna stick all that well anyway, so I just used nails, and that seemed to work. And then I flush trimmed the back. Now the, the third half of this project is doing the doors, and I'm gonna use Kaya again, which is what I used on the cabinets in the bathrooms. It's gonna just be a simple rail and style door. So I'll cut the pieces down to size. So I need two long, somewhat thin pieces for the vertical section and then two fatter, shorter pieces for the top and bottom. And I'll joint and plane those and get them nice and straight and get them cut to their length. And then on the inside face of all four pieces, I'll cut a groove and I'll center that by flipping the piece around as I rip it through the table saw. So I'll get a groove that's centered on the on the face of the piece and then on the top and bottom i'll cut off the two sides which will give me a tenon that'll fit within that groove and when i glue that together that'll give me a nice strong joint before i glue the pieces together i thought i could drill the holes for the hinges so i did that so it's a 35 millimeter diameter hole and it's at least 11 millimeters deep. And then the last thing to go in is the glass. And I have some glass that we pulled out of the kids' bathroom that we're also redoing. Now, I'm not a glass cutter, but I've done it in the past, so I, I, I tried my hand at doing this again. So I scored it, and I clamped it down right at the edge of the table along the score. And I thought about trying to break it just at that point, but but the, the thought I had then was, was to clamp two pieces of plywood to the piece that needs to get broken off. And I was almost ready to do it at that point, and then I decided I should get some eye protection. And finally, the moment of truth, and it worked. Perfect. So I got the glass for the panels. And now I can glue the whole assembly together. And it worked pretty well. 
The strength of this joint is where the side grain is glued together, not so much where the end grain is being glued together. And then I can take the clamps off once it's dry. The mirror material is a little bit thinner than the slot I had cut, so I made some little shim pieces to stick in between the frame and the glass to keep the glass from rattling. So I just cut some quick little squares that will fit in there. So a little dab of glue just to hold it in place. This, this doesn't need any strength, it just needs to not fall out. Then I did a little sanding at this point. I can cut the doors down to something close to their final size. Then it's time to put the hinges in and they fit into the holes that I drilled in the door frame and then two screws hold them in place. It was at this point that I realized I didn't quite have enough depth in the box for the length of the hinge. So my quick sort of solution was to cut out a little piece of the back to give me a little bit more length for the hinge. So I drilled out a hole at each corner of the rectangle of the back that I wanted to take out. And then with a chisel, I cut away the little piece that I wanted to take out. And that gave me just a little bit more length for the hinges to fit. I put the hinges onto the cabinet at this point. And then the hinges can be taken apart so the door can be taken off so that I can install the cabinet without the door on there. So I put the boxes in and I wanted to have a little bit of a reveal between the wall frame and the door. So I cut some shims to put between the, the wall and the box. And these would hold the box away from the wall just a little bit, ju just to give a little bit of a reveal. I should have been using my zero clearance insert at this point, but I didn't. And I tacked the shims in place. And I could use a little scrap piece from the doors that I'd cut off to set the depth that the box should be inset from the wall. And I hid the screws on the hinge side behind the hinges, which one hid the screws, but it also meant that the force from the door is going into the hinge and then directly into the wall and not through the cabinet. And I can put the doors on and then do a, a final fitting of the doors because the, the frame in the wall wasn't perfectly square or perfectly sized. So it took some fitting to get the doors right. And I needed to make a filler piece that would go between the two doors to cover up the stud that runs between the two boxes. So I cut a piece to length and then to width and then joined it and planed it. And then cut it to a final length and it would set in between the two doors. And I got that adjusted just exactly right. And I tacked it in place with some finish nails. Then I put some finish on. I should have probably just taken the doors off to put the finish on, but I, I left them on in place. It worked okay. There we have it. And then... I'm going to put the pulls on, and I think, I think traditionally they'd go like, like this, but I really don't like that. And the way I've been doing this whole room, it makes more, much more sense for them to go in the center down here. So I think that's where I'm going to put them. So I took the doors off and took them down to the shop, drilled two holes for the pulls, and realized that the screws that I had, I think were for three quarter inch doors, and these are closer to an inch thick. So I had to drill some holes in the back to let the screw head kind of be a little lower than the, than the surface of the door. Then it was time to put in the adjustable shelf brackets, and then the adjustable shelves. And it's done. And hopefully it doesn't get too cluttered. <laughs>